Here we see my wife and I's computer desk setup for the last 13 years of our lives. It features two used chairs and desks bought 13 years ago for under $40. Seeing as this isn't the prettiest thing to look at, we thought it was about time for an upgrade. In this video, I'm going to show you how I built this awesome double computer desk which features two outer drawer banks and a central pillar to house two computer towers and a massive junk drawer above them. But... I'm not finished yet. There's more. Behold. And with that, let's get on with the build. All right, let's go. I begin the project by prepping my stock. First up is the quarter inch oak plywood, which is cut to size at the table and miter saws. These will become the drawer bottoms for all nine drawers and uses nearly all of one four x eight sheet of plywood. Next comes the arduous task of manhandling full four x eight sheets of three quarter inch oak veneer plywood through the table saw. Once all pieces are cut to width, I can use stop blocks set up at my miter station to make sure that the many duplicated pieces are cut to the exact same length. This is a must for any project that requires multiples of the same pieces as it takes away any inconsistencies. For all the wide cross cuts, I used my homemade track saw guide, which I had whipped together just for this project. It's just a piece of quarter inch plywood on the bottom and some straight scraps of three quarter inch plywood surrounding the width of the circular saw shoe. This track guide creates a zero clearance effect and totally eliminates any chip out on the very prone to oak plywood. This project requires four whole sheets of three quarter inch plywood. If you want to build this project or any of my other projects, a full cut list can be downloaded for free on my website, diybuilds.ca. Next over at my homemade pocket hole machine, which I have free plans for as well, I drill all the pocket holes in the front and backs of the drawers. The stretchers between the six uprights also get pocket hole treatment as this will hide the joinery against the floor and the underside of the desk. Next at the router table with a rabbiting bit setup, I run each drawer piece through to create a groove in the bottom of the drawers to glue in the quarter inch plywood bottoms later. The next step was to apply iron-on edge banding to all edges that will be visible once assembled. Note, there is a lot of edge banding in this project. I do have a dedicated video if you want more detail on how I apply edge banding. But the gist of it is, you iron it on, press hard, trim the edges, flush trim the faces, and sand everything smooth. I chose to sand everything to 240 grit before assembly as this allows me to use my random orbit sander on all the flat faces. Whereas if I had assembled everything and tried to sand after the fact, it would have been nearly impossible to use the power sander. I also took this time to break the sharp edges with some hand sanding. Now let's take a look at a stack up of all the plywood pieces required for this project. I begin assembly of the shallow drawers, of which there are seven. I lay my roofing square on the table to help align my front and side pieces before clamping and driving in three pocket screws in each side. The use of a clamp when using pocket screws is not an option. If you don't clamp your work, the screws will move your piece and the alignment will be off. I flip it around and the back is attached in the same way. The bottom can now be glued into place using a minimal amount of glue as to avoid squeeze out on the inside of the drawer. The bottom is held in place with some 1 inch me nails while the glue dries. In some instances, a clamp was required to keep the sides parallel in the middle before driving in the brads, as some sides had a slight bow to them. This exact process is repeated for the two deep file cabinet drawers. A hammer can be a great way to micro adjust the flushness of the edges while being held in clamps. This deep drawer was slightly out of square, so a long clamp was added across kitty corners to suck it into square before driving in brad nails to hold it permanently in shape. Again, I measure the front, back, and middle before nailing down and keeping the sides parallel due to bowed plywood. Now on to assembly of the two drawer banks that make up the outer legs of the desk. There are two large panels with edge banding on the front and four stretchers that get attached via three pocket screws at each joint. Four stretchers are identical, but one of them has edge banding on the front and this will be the bottom front piece which will be stained and visible at all times. Again, clamping while using pocket screws is an absolute must. Next I begin installing the drawer slides by placing down a 28 inch full extension drawer slide with a part that attaches the drawer already removed and resting on a plywood spacer block. I then clamp on a little jig that sets back the drawer slide to the thickness of a 3 quarter inch piece of plywood as this will ensure my drawer front sit flush with the outside edges of the cabinet. The slide gets one screw in the middle and then the front jig can be removed 
so I can drive in a screw in the front and the back. The spacer block is removed and moved over to the other side as the same process is now repeated. I then reinstall the part of the drawer slide that attaches to the drawer and slap down some 8th inch hardboard strips along the bottom. These space the drawer slightly off the bottom so nothing rubs during normal operation of the drawer. The drawer is dropped into place and pulled out slightly. The rails are flushed up with the front using a block and the first screw hole is now exposed on each side. A single screw is driven into the drawer and can be pulled out to expose the middle screw location. The drawer can now be removed from the rails and the last screw can be driven in the back to each side on my workbench. I then remove the spacer strips, slide the drawer into place, and test the function of the drawer. To install the three smaller drawers on top, I first remove the large drawer and flip the cabinet upside down. This process is exactly the same as the large drawer except the drawers are now facing upside down and the spacer block is thinner to keep the drawer slides more in the center of the drawer as the drawers are shallower. For the next two drawers, it's the same process, but instead of referencing my spacer off the top stretchers, I'm directly laying my spacer block on the drawer below. And for the next few drawers, it's rinse and repeat. Now I can flip the cabinet right side up again and test the function of all four drawers. Next I begin assembly of the central pillar which houses the two computer towers and features a massive junk drawer at the top. The bottom stretchers are replaced for a full piece of plywood as this is more like a shelf than a stretcher. The top stretchers are thin like the other cabinets to save on material. A clamp ensures no movement of the joints while pocket screws hold everything together. The unit is flipped top side down and the wide drawer is installed the same way as the other shallow drawers. I then flip the unit back right side up and test the function of the drawer. Now at the drill press, I have a 1 inch Forstner bit set up to drill three evenly spaced holes in my central cross member of the monitor stand shelf support to allow for cables to pass through. Because you know, they call me old fashioned, I still prefer my wired keyboard and mouse. You fancy kids and your wireless technology. To begin assembly of the shelves, I clamp down the upright piece on one side and drive in the pocket screws. I then use a spacer block to align the cross support piece, clamp it using the pass through holes and drive in two end screws first. The other upright piece is attached to the cross support first, then screwed down to the shelf. I then lay one of the tabletop pieces upside down on the shelf and line it up with where the chair space will be to make sure the shelf is centered where you sit. I then draw the lines on the center lines of the 3 quarter inch plywood to show where to drill pilot holes for the 2 inch screws that will attach the shelf to the table top. Each hole then receives a countersink before disassembly. Next I start cleaning up some oak pallet wood to be used for the edging around the two sides of each table top. Over at the router table I have a half inch roundover bit set up and round over the top and bottom front edges of each board. This leaves a nice edge for your wrist to rest against. Say that three times. Wrist to rest against. Wrist to rest against. Wrist to rest against. The edging is mitered on the corner and glue is applied along the edge that touches the plywood. The edging is only held on with glue so multiple clamps are needed to ensure flushness of the front seam where they meet. I made sure as I was tightening the clamps to apply downward pressure on both items. The same is done with the side edging except glue is also added to the miter joint. Once the glue is dried, I take the top out of the clamps and begin chiseling off the large chunks of glue squeeze out. I then use the random orbit sander to remove the remaining squeeze out. The next step is totally up to your taste, but I went ahead and milled up a bunch of random maple pallet wood pieces to make up my drawer fronts. All the fronts were thickness to just under 3 quarter inch and cut to size. I have measurements on my plans for the drawer fronts, but it's best to take direct measurements off the final assembled cabinets as there could be some slight variations. 
To attach the drawer fronts and handles, I create a right angle jig with two holes spaced three inches apart in the center to rest on the drawer fronts for easy drilling of the holes. The same jig is used for the large file drawers as well as the wide center drawer with the exception of the one edge removed and manually aligning the center mark. Since my drawer fronts and drawers are the same height, I can just clamp the fronts onto the drawers and use a combination square to center the fronts. Once centered, I can drill pilot holes and drive in two pocket screws to hold the front in place. With the three shallow drawer fronts installed, I remove the two middle drawers to make room for my clamps to hold the big drawer front in place while resting on a thin spacer block on the bottom. Because the drawer pole lands above the drawer frame, these fronts need holes drilled from inside and attached with four pocket screws. I then reinstall the four drawers and inspect the fit and it looks good. Next it's time to take it all apart in preparation for staining. As I took apart the drawer slides, I quickly hit the raised holes with my sander to flush everything up. Before staining, I took everything outside and blew it down with my leaf blower to remove the dust. This is all red oak and the stain I used is dark walnut. The stain was brushed on heavy, then a towel was used to wipe away the excess. I gave everything about three days to dry before starting to apply polyurethane. The tabletops received six coats over many days of satin water-based polyurethane being brushed on. Between coats, I scuffed the surface with a 240 grit sanding block to provide better adhesion for the next coat, as well as knocking down any imperfections. This resulted in an amazing finish. Next at the table saw, with the blade bevel set to an angle of 15 degrees, I rip a few scraps of red oak on each side, then cut to 5 inches length at the miter saw to create a handle for the 9 drawers. I used my stationary belt sander to lightly round over the edges before applying the same dark walnut stain and wiping away the excess. I then modified my drawer front hole drilling jig to allow the drawer poles to sit in the right position so I could drill the two holes in the back side of the poles. Now that the stain is dry and the holes are drilled in the poles, I quickly sand the drawers and mount the drawer front with the two outer pocket screws. I then partially drive in two inch screws so they poke out just a little bit and apply a small amount of glue to the back of the pole. I then drive the two inch screws all the way in and the drawer is complete. For everything but the tabletop, I sprayed on two coats of satin water-based polyurethane, sanding with 240 grit between coats. Once the poly had fully dried, I could reassemble all the drawers using my spacer blocks for perfect alignment. Then at the table saw, I ripped some 8th inch hardboard and cut to length at the miter saw. These sheets are glued and crown stapled to the back side of the three cabinets. They add a ton of rigidity to the structure and stop them from racking. They were attached at the very end as this made it way easier to access things during the finishing process. Lastly, I used my miter saw to cut four pieces of half inch by half inch aluminum angle to be used as the file rails. At the drill press, I drill three pilot holes in each rail and use a countersink bit so the flathead screws sit flush. To mount the rails to the drawers, I use my self-centering drill bit to drill pilot holes, then drive in three small flathead screws. With that, the build is complete, and now it's time to remove the old stuff and bring this beast inside. Please enjoy me removing my old desk and carpet in super fast motion. The reason I changed out the carpet was this desk is 10 feet wide and that old carpet was not, and I wanted the desk to sit on the carpet and not the tiles. Now it's time to mention that this project was inspired by TVLiftCabinet.com reaching out to me and asking if I wanted to feature their product in my video. Obviously I said yes, as I know from other YouTubers such as Nick Ferry and John Peters that they make an amazing product. They did send me this lift for free to review in my video, but if you wanted to get your own, you can go to tvliftcabinet.com and order one yourself. The lift is very beefy and obviously made to last. It also has my favorite feature, which allows the lift to go up and down automatically when the TV is turned on due to a current sensing technology, which also has an adjustable delay timer. Now that the lift and TV were mounted to my wall studs, I can begin placing the desk cabinets in their correct locations and reinstalling the drawers. I then lay the monitor shelf face down and rest the tabletop upside down on it. I make sure to drive in the two rear screws before the rest to ensure proper alignment of the rest of the holes, as a screw coming through my nice new tabletop would not be good. The right side desktop is spanned across the cabinets and the left side can get the same treatment. 
but also gets this centerpiece of plywood, which will seamlessly join the two tops together from the underside. The last thing to do is take out the top drawers and using a few pocket screws, drive in a few screws to attach the cabinets to the tabletop through the stretchers from the underside. Off camera, I wired up my wife and my computers, filled the drawers with a bunch of crap and tested to make sure that everything was working correctly. And with that, this project is complete. Damn, I'm good.